uh, we can now speak about the current humanitarian uh, situation in the South American nation because we're joined on the programme, I'm happy to say, by the President of the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, Francesco Rocca. Uh, it's a great delight to have you on the programme as well, speaking to us from Caracas. Tell us how bad is the humanitarian situation where you are now? But this situation is, uh, is, really, is really challenging. Uh, unfortunately, here the uh, health and nutrition are the two top priorities uh, for us as an organization. Uh, and on, on these, of course, we are, uh, we are trying to, to scale up uh, our, our operation together with the Venezuelan Red Cross. It, uh, the, the, but I can assure you that uh, uh, the health conditions are uh, very, very difficult. What are the main challenges that you are facing in getting humanitarian aid into Venezuela? But so far, uh, we are working, of course, uh, to, um, to have the, the enough uh, medicine. This is the, this is the challenge. We are, uh, this is the reason why I'm here, just to engage with both the parties uh, to, to respect our humanitarian uh, role and to allow us to, to implement our, uh, our action and our operation. So the, the, the problem is to clean the table for the political issue related to the humanitarian aid, which must never be politicized. At the moment, this is the, is the big challenge, that the humanitarian aid uh, has been uh, politicized. This is dividing uh, the political debate, uh, which it shouldn't be. Nonetheless, though, the specter of a possible foreign intervention, it looms large in Venezuela. Does your organization have to, have to prepare for such an eventuality? And if it happened, how would that affect your work in the country? Of course, it would be it would be much more difficult. Uh, we we are we are uh, we are used to to, to work even uh, in uh, in very difficult environment uh, like it has happened in several locations in uh, Syria, Yemen, or other. Uh, but uh, we hope that this is not uh, this is not the case, uh, and that the, the the peaceful dialogue uh, can prevail. Uh, we hope that the the, the the this option won't be on the table in the next day, and they will find out a way to sort out from this difficulties uh, because here can only worst uh, the, the, the humanitarian challenges uh, in that case uh, it would be very very uh, difficult but but uh, of course we are always ready to face any situation as we always did but of course the situation would be uh, even worse than now for sure has the humanitarian situation as you have witnessed it significantly worsened since january essentially the start of the crisis there No, but look, January is not a starting point uh, from, from nothing. Of course, day by day, because the financial crisis, uh, the, the situation is, is getting worse. Uh, but we cannot talk about uh, from January. Here, uh, last year, we were at the border with, uh, with um, Colombia, receiving more than three, million, three millions of uh, Venezuelan people fleeing the country for several reasons, uh, many for uh, looking for other opportunities or new, new job, or other uh, looking uh, to find uh, solutions for the health condition, for a health condition of uh, parents or relatives. Uh, and this, is, uh, this has been the case. But uh, from January, of course, every day can only get worse because the financial crisis. But it's not generally the starting point. Um, the situation, the humanitarian crisis in Venezuela, it's one of the main headline stories around the world. People are aware of it. Can the international community do more to help what is happening right now to Venezuela? Yes, the international community can do more in uh, giving to the humanitarians and the real humanitarians uh, uh, the, the, the space to support the most vulnerable communities here in Venezuela or elsewhere. Uh, the problem in this moment, engaging uh, in the dialogue with the international community, it seems to be uh, very politicized, even the humanitarian aid. And this is a big reason of concern for our movement, or the Red Cross movement, and the, of course uh, the, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. We don't want uh, mm -hmm. that these uh, 
uh, is, uh, uh, get politicized from, from the international communities. And you, you are involved in helping throughout the world in a lot of conflicts, a lot of crises. How does what is happening right now in Venezuela, how does it, for instance, um, differ from what is occurring in Yemen or, or Syria? How does it compare? No, of course, you cannot compare a conflict situation uh, with, this, uh, with this one. Uh, here uh, we are working on the ground uh, to, the, to the Venezuelan Red Cross. Uh, we run eight hospital uh, and uh, 33 outpatient services. Uh, just as an example, uh, in uh, 2018 uh, we, we, we served more than one million of Venezuelan people, uh, of course, uh, with the limits of this lack of medicine, a lack of resources. Uh, but these are uh, the kind of operation uh, that we, we run. Uh, the, the, the hope is that we can scale up uh, with the, with the uh, agreement of both sides uh, without any politicization, as I clearly said. And just finally, are you optimistic that that can happen, that you, that you will be able to help significantly in the country more? As I, I, thank you for the question. As a humanitarian, I always be optimistic. Mm. Uh, I shouldn't be here uh, and, uh, because my, in my role, I am optimistic. I engage everyone in the, in the dialogue. Uh, Sometimes, unfortunately, we fail, but uh, often uh, we, we, we achieve our goal and we start our work uh, uh, giving hope uh, and restoring, uh, of course, the dignity of the human being as they deserve.